Well, good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look back in time, back to 2022. And I also have a surprise decode for you guys today that I just put together about an hour ago on Ivanka Trump. Because many of you actually exposed the connection to Kim Kardashian in the lookalike that appeared in the American Horror Story Season 12. And I had forgotten that we had talked about that. But one of you mentioned it, and I was blown away when I went down that rabbit hole about an hour ago. So we'll get into that. But today's show, the entirety of today's show, will be about 2023 and what happened. What actually happened in 2023 that we thought would happen in 2022? In other words, as you guys know, this show is a spectrum. It's a continuum of information. And through these decodes, we can kind of anticipate where the controllers are leading us. So at any given time, any snapshot in time, we can look and see how accurate we are about the things that we're thinking about in the future, right? Some examples are like the Electric Kingdom, uh, copper prices, uh, you know, these kinds of things. So we're going to examine that. We're going to see if the events of 2023 ended up being what we thought they would be back in 2022. And I like to do these follow-up shows so we can kind of stay the course and take stock. Now, YouTube removed last year's annual review video. It was actually a couple years ago. 2021, we did an annual review video like the one we're going to do today. And YouTube removed it. Because we were so accurate about what we said was going to happen the year before and then what ended up happening during the pandemic. And so they did not like that. And they removed that video. It was right over the target. And I think it scared the controllers because it showed all the things that we said were going to happen were happening. And they did not want that. Well, this year, obviously, we don't we won't be dealing with these types of sensitive matters, subjects, right? pandemic's over it's been over for a few few years now but one thing we said was that more and more people would be falling out didn't we and that also the the effects of a certain thing would be disclosed at some point and so that absolutely did happen in 2023 the effects started being disclosed but it was too little too late wasn't it so what I'm learning about these people is that eventually they have to disclose certain things. Now, there were many other very profound things that we talked about in 2022 for the year 2023 that actually did come to pass. We're going to review those and we're going to start with a most recent decode we did about Kim Kardashian and Ivanka Trump that just manifested a few days ago. Do you guys remember when we were decoding American Horror Story Season 12? This was back in October, October of this year. And many of you said that the woman getting out of the car looked like Ivanka. I specifically remember that. Now I went back through our videos and I could not find when that happened. I don't know if the video was taken down or... But you guys remember, you said, Casey... The woman getting out of that car looks like it's an Ivanka Trump lookalike. Well, I guess the joke was on us because this was already known back in 2017. This was a Twitter post by American Horror Story News France. And back in 2017, they said Emma Roberts as Ivanka Trump. So they were already comparing this woman to Ivanka. Now, why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about Ivanka Trump's lookalike in American Horror Story? Well, because in American Horror Story, Emma Roberts plays a mother of a demon spawn twin who was impregnated by... The witch, Kim Kardashian. 
This was just, we just decoded this in October. And then just a few days ago, the real Ivanka, remember, the lookalike was in American Horror Story playing next to Kim Kardashian. And then the real Ivanka appeared with Kim Kardashian in real life at a concert. Now, this occurred on December 14th, seven days before the Antichrist would be born. If you don't know about the Antichrist video and the whole timeline of birth and all of that that we talked about, you got to go back and get caught up on that. December 14th, it's also the 11th anniversary of Handy Sook. Which was also the date that Obama appeared in the classroom on the 11th anniversary of Handy Sook as Skinny Santa. So there's some rituals popping off, aren't there? We're going to get down to the bottom of it. So what is this all about? Well, let me do a quick recap. For those of you that aren't in on this, it's probably a little bit confusing. Let me do a quick recap for you guys. This is Ivanka Trump's lookalike, admitted by American Horror Story, and you guys picked up on it. She appeared in American Horror Story that just released a couple months ago, which we decoded. Many of you realize that she looked like Kim Kardashian. Emma Roberts is the name of the actress. She spawns demon twins. And Kim Kardashian was the one that made that happen. She was giving her medications and pills and stuff like that in the episodes, causing some kind of transformation in the womb. And then here comes the real Ivanka hanging out with Kim Kardashian. So that's the summary. Now let's keep going with this because there's more. Emma Roberts. This is the woman here. And as you can see, she does very much look like Ivanka Trump. But what makes it even more weird is her name. Emma. E-M-M-A. -E That's a going in and coming out. A portal name. And this begs the question. Is Emma Ivanka's true twin? E-M-M-A. That's a pair. It's a portal. It's a twin. A twin name. Now let's keep going with this. We're putting together a picture here. Now I did put together a playlist for you guys on all the American Horror Story decodes that we've done. So it'll be easy for you to find them for those of you that are interested in this. Now... I don't like to judge people just based on numbers because people try to do that to me all the time, right? Plug my name into a calculator, even though you can pl plug in anything into a calculator and find synchronicities. In fact, I was even born on the 88th day of the year, so I don't judge based on numbers. We got to look at these people's actions. And so far, Ivanka has not garnered enough power to really do anything yet other than her appearance in the World Economic Forum and being the child of Donald Trump, who we've exposed. But look at this. Now she's hanging out with known witches, and that ups the ante quite a bit, doesn't it? Now she's hanging out with known witches that do vampire facials and all this stuff. We've already exposed Kim Kardashian, as have many other people. But many of you will remember that we decoded Ivanka's name last year. This is the thumbnail from that decode in which we decoded Ivanka's name. We also decoded Ivana's name, her mother. And here's what we found. 9-11. From the date of 9-11 to Ivanka's birthday... 49 days, 7 times 7, 1 month, 19 days, which is 9-11 backwards. 
So basically, the exact timing of her birth forms a loop, a circle. 9-11-11-9. Now, what else is going on? Well, now everything has become clear. Hindsight is twenty twenty, isn't it? Ivanka was born on the eve of Halloween. So, an American horror story connection seems appropriate. And, her father was the father of the IV. Intervenous. Now, I know that vaccines don't go into the veins, but it is an injection. So there's a connection there, isn't there? And to drive it all home, a different kind of IV, remember Ivanka's name starts with IV, a different kind of IV was the central theme in the American Horror Story Season 12. IVF, in vitro fertilization. That is how the woman is impregnated with the demon spawn in the series. Now, if you're still on the fence about all this, something weird went on with Ivanka's mother, Ivana, who, of course, has passed away. And there were rumors, strong rumors, that she underwent IVF to have her three children, Donald Trump's children. This is crazy. Could Ivana Trump have conceived three children while she had an IUD? Now, I used to sell these IUDs. I sold the Mirena IUD for like five or six years when I was a pharmaceutical rep. The Mirena IUD does not have the copper in it, but other IUDs do. This actually looks like a Mirena here. The copper ones have copper. The Mirena is like plastic. It's made out of polyethylene. Let's see which one she used and let's see what the rumors were back in 2017 about if, in fact, Ivana did undergo, undergo IVF. Remember, the connection here is the American Horror Story in vitro fertilization and the demon twin spawns the way exposed on our recent decodes. So, apparently, Ivana Trump released a memoir back in 2017, Raising Trump, a breezy account of her central role in bringing up three of Americans' most powerful children. As she tells it, her life was a series of ski trips and interior redesigns packed between working at her husband's company and raising her kids. Her ex-husband and her current president, Donald Trump, seems largely absent, stopping in, in only to worry whether his namesake might grow up to be a loser. But even with that, so blah, blah, blah. But even with that, the most horrifying part of her autobiography is undoubtedly her assertion that she conceived all three of her children while having an IUD. She goes on to recount each instance she got pregnant with the IUD in place. That's right. Every single one of Trump's triad apparently exists in spite of their mother's repeated efforts to shut down the factory. That seems alarming, regardless of the form of birth control to which you subscribe. But if, like Ivana, you have an inner uterine device or rely on one, these stories are only that much more terrifying. How is this possible? Well, doctors say it's statistically improbable. Now, I can tell you that based on the statistics that I was told to talk to the doctors about, about the Mirena, it was 99.9% .9 effective. Because with the Mirena, there was like this medicine in here. Can't remember the name of it. Uh, it was a progestin only. And released a very tiny bit of progesterone into the cervix. Caused a plug, mucus plug, which would not allow 
any sperm to get up into the uterus. So therefore, it seemed to be more effective than the copper IUD. Copper IUD works by creating a toxic environment inside the uterus, basically throwing off the pH so that the egg pretty much dies once it enters the uterus because of the pH is wrong. Okay, they used to do this with camels. Hmm. Camel passing through the eye of the needle. Yes, to keep camels from getting pregnant in the desert, they would put a stone inside the uterus, throwing off the pH and not allowing the egg to implant in the sidewall of the uterus. And this is where the concept of an IUD came from, putting something foreign into the womb. Let's keep reading here because they bring up IVF here. So, uh, let's see here. Where does it say here? Okay, let's just keep reading. By the time, by describing it as all a little weird, Gunter, which is this OBGYN that's commenting on this, is being generous. Generous. If the IUDs were not compromised in some way, and if generously round round up to a firm 2% failure rate, the statistical chance of Trump experiencing three pregnancies while using this form of birth control is super, super low. Okay. Another thing that could explain her situation is that IUDs were not working perfectly. All right. Uh, let's get down to the in vitro fertilization part of this. So, the assumption is made here that she got pregnant a different way. And maybe all this was a made-up story. Which adds to the, th the plot of this thickening, correct? And maybe, you know, she ended up dead, of course. But there's more to this story, even, that goes even deeper. Ivanka is now 42 years old. And there's that magic story, right? That we've, that magic number that we've been talking about. The 14, 14, and 14. The three trimesters that we had identified. The number 42. They call that the secret to the universe. So, why did she appear with Kim Kardashian? Where? And what does all that mean? Well, she appeared at Justin Timberlake's concert, which was the grand opening of Phantom Blue, Las Vegas. Here it is right here, Phantom Blue, Las Vegas. And as you can see, it's got the monarch symbol, which is a twin symbol, monarch programming. There's even a new monarch TV series called Legacy of Monsters. And so here is the grand opening, and this is what Kim Kardashian appeared at with Ivanka Trump. But I looked at the roots of Fontainebleau. And apparently, it originated from Paris. This is the Chateau de Fontainebleau in Paris. I measured the alignment of this chateau, which is the palace. And sure enough... It came out to an 88 degree alignment. So, it appears as though in 2022 we were on the trail of Ivanka and she has now emerged as a person of interest. Somebody to watch in future decodes. Now I'm going to check in with you guys and we're going to get into some more predictions that we made in 2022 about the year 2023 good morning everybody welcome back to the channel now I want to be clear here the direction of this channel has always been guided by the Holy Spirit right so when we talk about what the future may hold it's not really a prediction we're pretty much just staying in the moment looking at the signs staying in God's will and seeing what is being disclosed right 
And it isn't until we look in hindsight that we see the stunning accuracy. So all I did was look back at all my old 2022 videos to see how accurate we were about 2023. Let's begin with the Electric Kingdom. So in 2022, I told you that in 2023, I can't tongue twister today. In 2023, that the Electric Kingdom would escalate. Now, it could have easily went the opposite direction, right? I mean, I know we did have Biden as president, but it could have easily fallen apart. And the Electric Kingdom could have stopped in its tracks. I don't think anybody was expecting Biden to do what he did about putting these time limits on how long it would be until we went full electric. And so that absolutely did happen in 2023. There was a full surge of electricity, electrification in America. They started setting deadlines for electric vehicles. The entire federal um, vehicle fleet was slated for electrification different states started eliminating propane and natural gas and putting timelines on it putting timelines on the end of coal heating oil and electric appliance enforcement began in many states and through the federal government so absolutely things became electrified and even the most liberal people were like shocked at how aggressive Biden was. In fact, a lot of liberals are against what Biden's doing, believe it or not, because they know that electricity is made with natural gas and they know that lithium batteries are highly toxic. And so, interestingly, liberals think that he's being too aggressive and using the wrong technologies. Now, this electric surge will be the precursor to the 15 minute city because by its nature the electric grid can only support populations within a 15 minute radius of its power center so what they're essentially doing is consolidation it's a consolidation takeover now back in 2022 we said that copper would continue to rise in value didn't we we started talking about copper were we right well, yes. Basically, what copper has done is it's now stabilized in price. It came down a little bit, but is now stabilized at a much higher price than it was five or ten years ago. Because copper is an essential component to the electric kingdom. So we were absolutely right about copper. There was an, uh, an original surge of copper prices in 2021, 2022. And copper has now stabilized and maintained its value. Now, what else are we going to get into? I have a couple tabs pulled up. We're going to talk about extreme risk protection orders, red flag laws. We're going to look at statistics on that and several other things relating to all this. Unbelievable. Now, remember we got into volcanoes. And lithium, which is an essential component to these to the electric kingdom, that absolutely did happen as well as we discovered the cult of Tlaloc and where lithium is mostly mined in dormant volcanoes. So apparently these dormant volcanoes were a gift from the spirit realm, from the dark spiritual forces that control this world. In other words... The people in power got a tap on the so shoulder from the devil himself and he said, go look in those volcanoes and there's all the lithium that you need. And the devil would know because the devil and all of his evil spirits were thrown into volcanoes as punishment, according to the book of Enoch. They were thrown into valleys of the earth and mountains of fire. So we saw a value surge of electric metals like lithium and copper and we saw also a volcanic eruption surge didn't we which kind of confirmed all of our beliefs on a spiritual level there were 19 volcanoes going off at one time just a couple weeks ago i don't know what the status is now but it absolutely confirmed everything we were talking about now let's get into some other topics 
Trump as the front runner. Now, nobody in 2022 thought that Trump was going to ever be a viable candidate for the Republican Party, but yet, as it sits now, he is well on top. In fact, they are saying that he would be the likely candidate. Now, there have been some hiccups. Colorado just pulled him off the ballot. If you hadn't heard this within the last 24 hours, Colorado said he's been pulled off the ballot. But interestingly, the way that they frame the breaking headline, it almost looks like he's pulled off of the, the ballot for all the states. But no, it's just Colorado. Now, he can appeal that and get that overturned. And I believe he likely will. And again, nobody in 2022 thought that he would be leading and be the number one candidate for the Republican Party with polls almost doubling the next nearest candidate. Nobody thought that was going to happen. But yet here we are in 2023 and it absolutely is happening. And we've stood and had the same exact opinion since the day after he lost to Biden. I told you he would be the next president. I guess we'll have to see about that one. I'm 50-50 on that, but I listen to the Holy Spirit and what it tells me regarding this kind, these kinds of things, and they're telling me he still has work to do. So, we'll have to wait and see on that. Animal attacks. Now, we covered this yesterday, so I'm not going to get too deep into this, but in 2022, I told you that there was a whole lot of news about people getting attacked by animals. Remember? There was a lady attacked by a fox and raccoons and all kinds of weird stuff. And then they were dropping rabies pellets everywhere. And I, I told you guys, and we looked at Revelation and Jeremiah, and there were different verses about animals attacking people. And I said, it's here, it's happening. And a lot of you thought, oh, maybe that's because someone has been changed by something they got poked with. And maybe that's why the animals aren't recognizing them anymore. And I think that might be a theory that I would believe. That those who got poked with something, maybe the animals are not recognizing them. But what if something's happening to the animals? We just discovered yesterday that science is now acknowledging that there are rapidly increased animal attacks. One of you put in the comments, there was an 80-something-year-old woman who had a pit bull who raised it from a puppy and the pit bull turned around and attacked and killed her that was left in the comments of yesterday's show so this is real it's happening what you want to do with it that's up to you i'm just a messenger now it's very difficult for the controllers to do two things at once we already know that right so after covid was over we anticipated an extended escalation on the war fronts in the Ukraine. Because remember, Ukraine was already starting to happen in 2022. But I was like, okay, you guys, now that they're wrapping up COVID, this Ukraine thing is going to escalate. So were we right about that? Absolutely, we were. We're now at almost $100 billion that Biden has poured into Ukraine. $100 billion with a B. So we were right about the shift away from COVID to the Ukraine. Because the controllers can't do two things at once. Because, not because they can't, but because they know that in order to trick everybody, they can only focus on one thing at a time. Right? And Marina Abramovich, we continued to keep our finger on the pulse of her, didn't we? We did videos about her praying over Tesla's ashes. Kept our finger on the pulse, even when most channels had kind of moved on from her. After the spirit cooking thing, remember? They kind of moved past Marina Abramovich. Yet, she re-emerged center stage as Ukraine's advisor. Requested by Zelensky. And I believe she will continue to be a factor in these end times as well. Let's talk about Skynet. In 2022, we said Skynet would continue to become self-aware in 2023. Remember that? Well, did that happen? Absolutely, it did. Remember, during Trump presidency, during the lockdowns, he signed a bill called 5G, 6G, and beyond. And now the network is robust. 
robust enough to support real-time surveillance, just like we said it would. The national ID, real ID, is now available in all 50 states. As we said, what happened? And it's one vote away from being forced on all citizens. Right now, it's still an option, but it's one vote away from being forced on all citizens. Now, if we go back in hindsight, we realize that several states were holding out from offering real ID, right? But now they're all compliant. They all gave in. And remember, the real ID cameras take very high resolution, detailed photos of your face, which can then be fed into the Skynet cameras and find you anywhere in the U.S. real time with facial recognition because they have a matching face, right? And once the states fully hand over identification to the federal government, we will officially be living in Nazi Germany. Now, one of the most profound 2022 predictions that we had about 2023 that shocked even myself was how we were on the trail of the Trilon and Parisphere World's Fair. Remember that? Now, I can't take credit for that because one of you were the ones that were like, Casey, you need to look at these World's Fairs. And I was like, World's Fairs? What's that about? Now, we had looked into the movie World of Tomorrow, which was about the World's Fair in Queens, Corona Park. Remember that? And then we found that banner up from the Trump family with the trial on in Paris fear, talking about the homes of tomorrow, the world of tomorrow. Well, I was not anticipating Las Vegas to open the sphere and U2's debut concert there. That was creepy. Remember we saw the concert from start to finish and we decoded the whole thing and they literally were flashing 666 all over the inside walls of this sphere. And we saw the whole recreation ritual out of the black graphene goo. Was not anticipating that to confirm all the work we did on the previous Trilon and Perisphere globe and needle ritual that they did back in the day in Corona Park where Trump was born, the father of the poker needle. Wow. Wow. Mind blown. So that was a major discovery that got confirmed. Now, how about the rise of rabies and zombies that we predicted about the year 2023? Well, as we mentioned in yesterday's show, science has now acknowledged the increase in animal attacks. As these rabies packets being dropped from planes has now increased up to 13 states so there's obviously a problem, but they're not telling the general public. They're just dropping rabies packets all over into the wildlife. We also have a huge uptick in chronic wasting disease. It's spread to more states than ever in the wildlife. And now illicit drug combinations are causing people's flesh to fall off as they walk aimlessly into traffic. So I think it's safe to say we're at the beginnings of a zombie apocalypse on many levels. Let me check in with you guys. Good morning. Hello, Patricia, Mark, Organic Me, RBS Truth. Yes, we're in the year of the cat, Mario. Boy. Now, here's another profound 2022 prediction that we made that manifested in 2023 the crossing x eclipses remember that we were talking all about that in 2022 many many videos on the crossing eclipses a lot of other true channels picked up on that well in 2023 all that manifested as everything x twitter changed into x we had drugs xylazine starting with x Everything was X, X, X in 2023. Now, I've got a counter here, a countdown to the next eclipse that will complete 
the X. That's on April 8th. Here's the countdown. 110 more days until the eclipse. And I'll be counting that down. We're going to, on the 99th day, I'm going to take note of this. And the 66th day and the 33rd day before the eclipse and many others. The 88th day will probably look. And I'm sure that things will start to happen as they count down this eclipse. That is set to happen on April 8th. Completing the X. Look at this. 12, 12, 12 p.m. is when this will happen on April 8th. Uh, I think it's safe to say there's something up with that. What else? Well, here's another spooky story that we talked about. Remember the Notre Dame vampire? Remember they had found some caskets underneath Notre Dame in the floor. And they hadn't seen them yet, but they used ground penetrating radar. And they basically broke up the ground because, remember, they were rebuilding the cathedral there because it had caught on fire. And remember we saw the spire of the church fall over and we did a side by side of that and I showed it to you and it looked like a match in iPet Goat 2 watching the spire fall over in iPet Goat 2 which came out in 2012 and then putting that side by side with the actual spire that fell over at Notre Dame and the two matched almost exactly and so a couple years went by after that fire as they were cleaning up and rebuilding. And underneath Notre Dame, they found some coffins buried under the ground. Right under that spire. And remember, I told you guys, we did some stories on what was likely inside. Nobody knew what was inside. But I told you that this was all about vampires. Because, remember we talked about the lead coffins we looked back and found some myths about the Bride of Dracula put in a lead coffin down in, I think, Brazil, if I remember the story correctly. And she was put in there because they thought that the lead would contain her spirit and her body from reanimating and killing more people. So there was something about these lead coffins that royalty are buried in. And in fact, we found that the royal family was buried all of them in lead coffins. Now, lead is a very cheap metal, a cheap material. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? And then Charles, Prince, and then King Charles came forward and admitted that his bloodline went to Dracula. Remember, the vampires are buried in lead coffins and it was thought to contain their spirit and also protect them from outside forces lead is kind of like a it's like it blocks it blocks things well we were talking about all of that right before anybody knew what was inside the coffins and then lo and behold months after that they opened the coffins and do you guys remember what was inside those coffins let's see who gets the answer what was inside the coffins once they finally opened them Let's see who gets the answer. Protect the dead from, what does that say? Radiation, kryptonite. What was inside the coffin? There were several coffins. <laughs> you guys remember, it wasn't that long ago. Nope. <laughs> nope <laughs> somebody was paying attention I know Rebecca was what was inside the coffins long skulls Tony got it elongated skulls now they tried to say that these were elite that had their brains wrapped as children it's that same old cover story right but we know what the elongated skulls were don't we? We already know. Now let's hop off of that. Start to wind up the show with these extreme risk protection orders. The red flag laws that Trump passed 
Remember those? Let's figure out how many Americans have been targeted under this unfair law, this pre-crime law that Trump endorsed and the states passed. Now, I dug into this and I found out that half of all extreme risk protection orders, about half that are filed, are actually granted by a judge. So, 109 were filed, few were denied, but 61 were granted. That's over half. And yet, I searched and I searched, and I could not find one description from one state about what actually qualifies as a, an extreme risk. Wouldn't they define this very clearly? Wouldn't they say, okay, an extreme risk is not a rumor. It's not a this. It's not a that. There has to be some kind of solid proof as to why someone's gun can be taken with the threat of violence. For instance, if a couple gets into a screaming match, can the wife file an extreme risk protection order based on her word against him who doesn't even get to defend himself because it's a secret, uh, you know, a secret petition put in behind his back? Just because she knows that her husband owns has guns? Now, what happens when these, you know, they try to make this sound like this is no big deal. But what this does is it puts a stain on your record forever. Makes you a target if one of these is filed against you. Law enforcement, you're on a list. You're on a short list. They know exactly what guns you have. To me, this is just a way for them to go in and basically document all of your registered weapons. And also, it's a fishing expedition to see if you have any illegal weapons. So, they go, they're not just going to go and show up to your door and say, Oh, give us your guns. No, they're gonna, there's a search warrant. So, they get to turn your house upside down. And they get to find any weapons you don't have registered. Or if you have any illegal weapons, now you're in big trouble. This isn't just some, oh, this is for the safety of the community and to protect you so you don't, in case you want to kill yourself. No, this is not what this is about. This pulls you into the legal system. And for all this power, they don't ever talk about what qualifies as an extreme risk. It's left wide open. So, simply saying something online or showing a gun could get them taken away. And how is this enforced? With violence, if the party does not comply. So, violence is used to prevent violence that hasn't happened yet? That makes absolutely no sense to me. Now, some states take your guns for six whole months. And at that point, whether you like it or not, you're entered into the legal system, which means courts, hearings, penalties, and as I said, fishing expedition. So, whatever they find in your house when they do the search warrant, surprise search warrant, you don't even know it's coming because somebody ratted you out. You're in trouble. And now you see the slippery slope about all this. A left-leaning judge who's already skittish about guns will almost always err on the side of caution. Because to them, the unknown in their mind is scary. And they don't want to be the one judge who denied the order that ended up causing people to die. They don't want that stain on the record. So when one is filed, they're going to go, oh, scary guns, take them. So I do not agree with take the guns now and ask questions later because that could ruin somebody's life. So where are we at with these red flag laws? Were we right about this, that this would escalate? Yes, we were. We're up to 21 states now with these red flag laws, extreme risk protection orders, 21 states. Now I did some research on this. And I found out, let me go back into the chat with you guys. I found out that Florida tops the list for the most orders issued. 
the most extreme risk protection orders issued. Now, we only have data to 2020. 5,000 people lost their gun rights based on pre-crime. Now, there's very little data on how many guns were seized in 2022 or 2023, but suffice it to say, the numbers have likely increased as the gun confiscation and documentation agenda of America is fully underway. And like I said, even though these guns are often returned, there's a giant target placed on those who have to endure this breach of privacy and breach of your Second Amendment rights. The paper trail is now attached to you and it exposes you to follow-up visits and targeting by state and federal officials who can share this data with other people about your private life and exactly what kind of guns you own. So, those are the highlights that I could find. There's probably many more, but those are the big ones about what we were talking about in 2022 that came to pass in 2023. And uh, now I'm back in the chat. We can have a, a short discussion about this before I pop off of here. Whew, that was a marathon. I probably should have broke that up into two shows. Maybe did the American Horror Story, Ivanka Trump, and then did the... But anyway, you guys are here, so... Some of you enjoy the longer shows, but others of you like the shorter shows where we only go for like 30, 40 minutes. But that was a doozy. Good morning. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I thought that Florida was a, you know right-leaning state for freedom and DeSantis is such a great person while well, they lead the pack it's not even close for gun confiscations based on pre-crime and that's what it is let's call it what it is it's pre-crime someone that hasn't done anything wrong but someone rats them out they file a petition and next thing you know you're in your underwear and the door gets busted open now i don't know if they have no knock warrants i tried to research no knock warrants for extreme risk protection orders but i can imagine that some of these might be no knock warrants which would mean you're laying in bed it's two in the morning and armed men come to your door bust it down and take all your guns they document exactly what guns that they took and now the feds know exactly what guns you have. And if you have anything illegal, you're busted. You, you could go to federal prison if you have anything illegal. So it's their way of peeking inside of your life. And that's what I believe this was really all about. Because anybody can file an extreme risk protection order. Anybody can. And you don't even get to face your accuser. So who's to say they're not just making up extreme risk protection orders just to find out what you have? Who's to say they're not doing that? Who would know? Nobody would know, would they? Wow. Now, have any of you had to endure this? That's probably a good question. Have any of you had an extreme risk protection order filed against you, even if it was denied? I mean, this would be the first thing an angry ex would do. After she got kicked out of the house, right? She'd go right to court and say, well, I'm, I'm going to get his guns taken away. And she can make up anything she wants. She can find a text message of him saying, if you don't knock it off, I'm going to strangle you. And that'll be all that it takes. So be very, very careful what you say to people. Because they can use that against you to take your rights. So... Unreal. All right, you guys, what do you think? Pop off of here. 322 says, uh, not knock laws. No, yeah, so again, I don't know. I'm asking you guys, but there are different kinds of warrants. There's a knock warrant, which is a lot less uh, invasive. They have to knock and ask you to come to the door, right? But I can imagine if firearms are involved and they're already 
decided that this person is dangerous and their firearms need to be taken away, are they going to knock nicely? I don't think so. Now, if you know something different, please let us know. I'm not here to spread disinformation. But are the extreme risk protection orders no-knock warrants? That's the question. Or are some of them no-knock warrants? Now, of course, the NRA is upset about this. They call it political abuse. Here's an article from 2022. Red flag laws, emergency risk protection orders are designed to empower the government to confiscate Americans' firearms without due process of law. Aside from allowing run-of-the-mill malicious actors to indulge personal grudges against law-abiding gun owners... In the current politically charged environment, these laws enable the government to target those with First Amendment protected political views. The government disfavors. So, think about this. You got a liberal living in your neighborhood and they know you got a bunch of guns. And they drive by your house and, you know, your mailbox and you know that they hit your mailbox and put a dent in it. And you tell them, if you come on my property, you're going to get it. That would be all that it takes. Right? That would be all that it takes. They would file... They, what if they recorded you saying that? They could file an extreme risk protection order against you. And your guns could be taken away. This is how loose this law is. There's no parameters to it at all. So, not good, you guys. Not good. Alright, let me go back into the chat here. I'll put links to all this for you guys. Shall not be infringed. Absolutely. Here's the way it should work. You commit a crime. Then they take your guns away. Right? Or, you know, you make laws regarding actual infractions that have to do with guns. You can't just assume somebody's going to do something. It's like trying to predict the future. Who's making these laws? Well, the states are making them, but Trump endorsed them. And of course, Biden does too, because he wants your guns too. Yes, laws for the criminals. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop off here. Probably see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.